here. I um, posted a com or a, a, a post on my blog, The Linguist on Language, and I'll try to remember to leave a link here, where I talked about, uh, you know, uh, whether we can learn 100 words a day. And I think that since I started Czech, I have learned more than 100 words a day, maybe 150 words a day. I don't know. Uh, I describe all these numbers on my blog post. Basically, link says that I know 200 or 25,000 words. Um, that includes non-words, numbers, names. How many of those there are, I don't know, maybe 10%. Um, plus, I have saved about 20,000 links, which includes a number of phrases. Of the words that I have saved, I don't know how many I know, but I think I know maybe a third of them. So, you know, 25, 28,000 words in there that, uh, so then I, I said that and then someone, uh, you'll see this all on the exchange on my blog, uh, various people have challenged different aspects of this. Uh, Stefan uh, from Denmark, uh, you know, said, well, yeah, but that's true in an inflected language like, like um, Czech where, you know, <clears throat> a noun might have six or seven different forms. Uh, verbs have different forms. In English, there are fewer forms. I mean, we do have I go, but we have he goes, and you go and he go, and went, and the gone. So we have a few forms of the verbs. Probably verbs, we have as many forms as the Czechs have, but in nouns, we just have the singular and the plural, and the Czechs might have six or seven. So if I have, theoretically, 25, 28,000 words in Czech, what is that equivalent to in English, <clears throat> um, uh, I know that um, Professor Nation, Nation in New Zealand has said that the relationship between words and word families is 1 to 1.6 in English. Uh, we also know from research we did at Link that those lessons like who is she and so forth, which are common to all of our languages or our supported languages, uh, that there are more unique words in say Russian or French than there are in English. And that ratio is two to one for Russian or 1.5 to one for the Romance languages. So we get some of a sense that therefore, you know, if my target in terms of learning words, uh, the way we count them at link, which is each different form of the word is different. So goes is different from go, uh, that on that basis, if we say you need 10,000 words for a certain level, in English, you, you will need 15,000 uh, in French and you'll need 20,000 in Korean or Russian, let's say. So these numbers are all, you know, to be taken with a grain of salt, but, but they're there because they're an indication of, of progress. So, and I know that uh, with my 25, 28,000 words in Czech after six months that I can read the newspaper on a subject that's familiar to me uh, so I do know quite a lot of words. So then the next uh, point of attack or, or, or challenging this whole thing uh, came from a person who said, well, you know, as a language learner, he said, I think you can only say that you know a word if you know how to use it at will. So this is this whole discussion of passive vocabulary versus active vocabulary. And I said that I consider that I know a word if I can recognize it in a certain context. Very often I can recognize the word in a context, but if outside the context, I may not know the meaning of the word. But to me, that is enough. So this was the major point of disagreement between me and this person, Neil, who, you know, with, with a, a lot of goodwill and so forth said, look, I'm struggling to learn Cantonese. That's the language that he's learning. And, um, you know, I can't learn a hundred words a day. There's no way. And to me, I, I, when I consider a word known, it's when I can actually use it at will, he said. Well, I want to challenge the idea that you only know a word when you can use it, and particularly use it at will. And I, and I do this for a number of reasons. First of all, when I go to learn a language, my first goal is to understand it. My first goal is comprehension. I want to be able to read and understand. I want to be able to listen and understand, listen to audiobooks, listen to people talking, watch movies. So number one goal is to understand. 
in order to understand, I only need to know the meaning of words in specific contexts. In other words, helped by the surrounding words so that I can figure out the meaning. I know it well enough to understand it when I see it or hear it. That's my number one goal. Now, uh, that's point number one. Point number two, even in my own language, I know far more words passively than I use actively. And if that ratio is three to one, I don't know. But in a foreign language, the ratio is much larger, always, even in languages that I speak well, because I'm not as confident in a foreign language. Uh, I for sure want to understand what the other person is saying, but when I go to speak, I rely on the words that I, that I really know that are trusty words, that I know exactly what they mean. I know that they're correct in this context. I know that these words are used with these other words in this way, in this context. I use only the words that I can really trust. Words that, you know, I might try, I might experiment with the odd word to see if it doesn't raise any strange, you know, expressions on the face of native speakers. But mostly I rely on the tried and true words and expressions that I know work. And I'm much more conservative in using words than when I'm trying to understand what people are saying. And this is perfectly normal. So I think it's perfectly normal that your um, passive vocabulary in a foreign language might be 10 times your active vocabulary. And if, Sam, learning Russian, and one of my goals in learning Russian is to read Tolstoy, so I want to understand Tolstoy, but I cannot presume to use words like Tolstoy. That's just not going to happen. He has at his disposal because he is an artist. He is, he creates using words. That's his medium. And I'm going to use all the words that he uses. I don't think so. I want to understand the words that he uses and that's perfectly legitimate. So suggest to suggest that you're going to use all the words that you can learn passively to me is not realistic. Um, furthermore, it's not realistic to think, I think it's counterproductive to say that if you come across a word, you're going to try and nail that word down until you can use it at will, until you can use it anywhere and so forth. That's not realistic. It's far more realistic to let your passive vocabulary grow through lots of reading and listening, lots of exposure, lots of enjoyment of the language, understanding what people are saying in conversation and not worrying about when those words convert into words that you can use. They will do so gradually. If you try to nail down every single word that you learn and convert it into something that you can use at will, of course your vocabulary will grow very slowly because it's a very difficult thing to do. It's not because you're studying this list of words. It's not because you're going through flashcards that those words are going to stick for you. In fact, very often things that we study now won't stick for us until six months later. So it's better to forget about it. You learned it, you forgot it, you learned it, you forgot it. You kind of can figure out what it means in a context. When you read, you can't yet figure out what it means when you hear it. Doesn't matter. You just keep going. You expose yourself to more content gradually and surprisingly quickly. Your passive vocabulary grows and it grows largely incidentally. In other words, most of the words that I know in Czech, I did not deliberately study on my flashcards. Most of the words that I know in Czech or Russian or French are words that I just got to know because I had been reading so much and they kept on showing up and they're similar to other words and and I was able to infer the meaning and all of a sudden they're part of my vocabulary, but my passive vocabulary. And over a further period of time, as I'm speaking more and searching for words and occasionally I'll reach back in there for one of those passive words, bring it out, use it, and it worked. You know, my native speaker friend didn't say that, what do you, I don't understand. He seemed to understand. And so slowly these passive words are converted into active words. But in my opinion, when we evaluate how many words we can learn and how many words we know, it's, it's as passive words. And I sat down to dinner with my wife, who is not a keen language learner, but she speaks a few languages, but she's not into this discussion at all. And I just said to you, you know, when I, when I ask you if you know a word in a foreign language, does it mean that you can use it or does it mean that you can understand it? And she said, 
that I can understand it. So that's my take on it. Be happy if you have passive vocabulary, focus on the passive vocabulary, increase your comprehension, your ability to understand what you read and what you hear, and the active vocabulary will come. Don't get hung up. This is my advice, this is how I learn, you can do it however you want, but don't get hung up on the idea that you have to use or be able to use all the words you learn because that's very, very difficult to do. So that's my answer to my friend Neil Murray who's been commenting uh, on my blog and that's my take on this whole issue of how quickly can we learn words and what do we mean when we say we know a word. Thank you and I look forward to your comments.